The Beach by Ninja Brian Chapter 1 I've never done this before, at least not with another man, said Danny as he entered Brian's luxurious penthouse apartment overlooking the Central Park. The smell of pure, undiluted testosterone was nearly overpowering, although Danny was determined to continue towards what he imagined would be the most intense physical pleasure he had ever experienced. <laughs> Star he was correct. Brian just nodded and motioned Danny towards the trap door to the Beejatorium. It was going to be one hell of a Tuesday night. Chapter 2 Danny opened the trap door only to reveal a staircase covered in the finest velvet leading into the darkness below. The strains of passage to Bangkok wafted through the air played by the stereo system on Brian's private helicopter, which was stationed just outside the window to the apartment, hovering, waiting. Then he began to head down the stairs, but quickly stopped when he realised that Brian was no longer behind him. Then he looked around the room and quickly found Brian relaxing on a fur shea lounge just below the crystal chandelier, slowly applying layer upon layer of his vanity brand lip balm, transient decadence. Now it was Danny's turn to beckon Brian, who put the cover of it on his lip balm and placed it prominently in his front right pocket, so that the outline of the hard cylindrical plastic case formed a delicate protrusions visible through the waist fringes of his professionally tailored leathered pants. Brian fixed his gaze on Danny, slowly rose up from the chair chaise and playfully, yet buckishly, pushed Danny down the stairs in a way that was initially not cool, but gradually became cool. As Danny tumbled down the velvet, a shy smile crept across his face as he realised that this evening was going to be about one thing and one thing alone. Him. Chapter 3 Next, Darkness Danny awoke slowly. He could not tell how much time had passed. Perhaps only seconds, but possibly hours. Although Danny's eyes had not yet adjusted to the darkness around him, he could sense movement. The stench of man sweat assaulted his tender nostrils in much the same way that he could soon have his junk assaulted by Brian's eager, probing mouth. He could faintly hear Rush playing in the darkness, but the song had moved on to the live version of Tom Sawyer, which the band had played at Brian's celebrity-filled 35th birthday party held on international waters on a chartered yacht captained by supermodels. As his limbs brushed against 500 tread cut satin velvet sheets, Danny realised that he was in Brian's custom-made solid oak be bed. Someone must have gently placed him there while unconscious, and although he had no memory of the event, Danny appreciated the tender way in which he had been tucked in, stripped of all his clothes, given a full body shave, rubbed down with right, white rose petals and patted dry. Suddenly, the sound of freshly moistened lips smacked together, rang through the darkness, and sh a shadow approached the bedside. It was Brian. He was carrying a glow-in-the-dark lotion sampler given to him by Mr. President Obama, a personal friend. I see you're already hard, winked Brian. Good, you'll be needing that. Chapter 4 Slowly yet violently, Brian placed his perfectly manicured right hand on the sheet covering Danny and ripped it off the bed, throwing it so that it landed in a perfectly folded pile next to the extensive collection of erotic Grecian sculpture. Sculpture Brian had acquired on one of his many all expenses paid trip to Europe. Brian squirted an inappropriately large amount of lotion on his velvety, grabby palms. Danny softly moaned with anticipation, boredom, or one of his many other irrelevant and uninteresting emotions. Brian brusquely slapped his lotion-filled hands onto Danny's hairy, unflattering ties and slowly began to rub in small, circular motions while whispering the lyrics to Journey's song, Any Way You Want It, which Brian had ghost-written by himself, with no help. As Danny's ties got moister and moister, Brian's hands worked their way up into Danny's poorly maintained hand wash. 
and just as Brian was about to, to take a one-way trip... <laughs> a one-way trip to Sacktown, he paused. It is time, screamed Brian, slamming his open mouth onto Danny ere Danny's erect and unimpressive penis. Danny passed out from pleasure, terror, nobody cares. And so it began. Chapter 5 10.3 million years later, Danny awoke on the surface of Gropinius 4 in the hashtag butt system. Robot Brian was asleep on top of him, his metal mouth surrounding Danny's still erect and, not, and still not impressive dick. What happened? asked Danny, stupidly scratching his dumb face. W where are we? Robot Brian awoke with a start and began to speak in a metallic, commanding voice, not unlike that of a young ben Benedict Cumberbatch if he had been a robot, or whatever. Danny, many eons have now passed since first I began to be you. As you may well imagine, the bee started out amazingly. Although you were asleep, your body was wrecked with pleasure as my human mouth began to expertly work its way around your pallid, distasteful groin. I did everything a man could do to another man, including stuff I had to look up online because I had never heard of it because it was too gross, and despite all my mouth efforts, you slept. Cities rose and fell, and still you slept. All of human consciousness was uploaded to a vast database, and our bodies were replaced by superior synthetic ones, and still you slept. And even once I had robot hands, and used them to rub you all over especially in ways I know would not have been cool with you had you been awake, still you slept. As Earth blew up for some reason, I carried you to the final escaping starship, my mouth all the while, on your disgusting wiener, and took you here, to the most distant human colony. As I continued to work you over, still you slept. And gradually, after every other member of the human race had gone, the pace at which my mouth was bobbing up and down on your eager, barring shaft slowed. And then asterisk I asterisk slept. Robot Brian paused and stood. And now, said Robot Brian, metal hands held aloft in triumph. I shall finish you off. Danny gasped in pleasure or something as Robot Brian threw himself towards Danny's gross junk. Using exactly the perfect amount of mouth friction, Robot Brian brought Danny to the brink of ecstasy and then stopped and once again stood. Just kidding bro, laughed Robot Brian. I'd never give you a real bee. That'd be gross. High five. As Robot Brian reached out his hand for an amazing high five, then he died. And the human race died with him. Well that wasn't very cool of him, Robot Brian to himself as he began masturbating into the sunset. That wasn't cool at all.